Hello, good people of YouTube. Mountbatten here. And today, a little bit of a bonus video for this week. Uh, this should be coming out on Sunday. Uh, in fact, the same day I'm recording it. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go through some comments and some frequently asked questions real quick. I'm going to give you guys my responses to them. So the comments we're going to look at, good comments, bad comments, kind of like, what the heck comments. And then I'm going to answer some FAQs that I often get in the comment section on stream and even in game. So here we go. So I've seen a lot of these comments here. The um, This is on the video from yesterday covering the return of Shut Up Ad of the uh, Belfast and the Dockyard. A lot of these comments, uh, Palmer and Tier 9 during Premium BB isn't going to be playable. X Sigma was reduced from already bad 1.6 to 1.5. Now, the thing with the Palmer is that one, it's a test ship, so this may change back. Um, the Palmer already gone through a lot of changes. It's kind of stuck in the development hell portion of being developed. And uh, Sigma of 1.5, that is going to be the lowest at the tier. 1.6 is what Al Alsace is at. And if you ever played Alsace, she has 12 guns. She has 12 French 15 inch guns with very high velocity and great pins. The German uh, guns, they do have good pins, not as good as the Frenchies, obviously. But the Alsace is still very, very workable with a 1.6 Sigma. And I've played it... Well, the Alsace is my favorite French battleship, so I've played it quite a lot. So, she is very good still, and um, if you've watched the video I put out, I think like two weeks ago, of of uh, me, Jeebus, and I think uh, Super, we were just in a, a div just trying to get naval battles done. I did, uh, I think it was like 240,000, 250,000 damage in Alsace uh, a while ago. And its secondaries are still very good. Now here's the thing. The secondaries on the Palmer are better than the Alsace's secondaries because they're German secondaries. It has the same secondaries as the FGG, which are really, really, really good. Which means they have those German pins. They can pin 32 millimeters of armor without IFHE. They have a good chance of starting a fire. And if you go full secondary build, they are very accurate. So I wouldn't write off Palmer as being unplayable. I mean, if they do stick with this 1.5 Sigma, that is obviously going to be a big downside to the ship. But we'll wait and see. I have a feeling that even if it's at 1.5, obviously it's not going to be good as having 1.6 Sigma. But 1.5... I wouldn't write it off as unplayable then. But again, the ship is still a long way off from development. I mean, off from uh, release on the same video as before. Uh, a lot of questions have ar arisen about the Puerto Rico for some reason about it ever coming back. Um, and not just from the comment section, but on stream I get asked about it a lot. Um, Puerto Rico, as far as uh, Wargaming is concerned, I believe it was just for that one dockyard event, and that's the only way you, you were ever going to be able to get it. So, I don't think Puerto Rico is going to come to the Research Bureau anytime soon, but um, if it does, I will be absolutely surprised. I think that would actually be a little bit unfair to the people who actually grinded the ship out in the event, because if you wanted to grind that ship out in the Puerto Rico Dockyard event, you pretty much had to give up your holiday in order to make it happen. So... No, I don't think it's going to come to the to the research bureau, and if they do, then that's um that's a bad move on Wargaming's part, in my opinion. Ah, uh, this is another question. I was just about to move on from this video, but this is another question that uh that uh gets brought up a lot. Will the ships in dockyard be sold in the premium shop? Now, this is an interesting thing because the way Wargaming was marketing the Odin, for example, they said if you complete the Odin dockyard event. You're going to be getting the Odin at pretty much a 95% discount because you only had to pay for the last two building phases. So, it sounded like they were maybe going to sell the Odin after the event. And I even said, I think in my Odin second impression review, that even if the Odin doesn't come out, and I'm sorry, if even if you don't get the Odin in the dockyard, if it does, for, for whatever reason, get put into the store... I feel it's still worth the price of a normal tier 8 premium, which is around 45 to $50. And Wargaming hasn't said one way or the other if it is or if it isn't. And, I mean, if I'm Wargaming, I can understand why the Puerto Rico won't be put on sale because it's a tier 10 premium ship. But you spend all that time developing the Odin, naturally you'd want to sell it after in the premium shop and 
continue to make money off of it. So, to my knowledge, I don't know. Uh, we'll find out. The Odin event ends uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, I believe, when uh, update 9.7 goes live. So I guess we'll find out then. Hey, their voices are adorable. Be nice. This is on the uh, top five players you'll meet in World of Warships 3. Um, obviously talking about the uh, weeb when I talked about the co the commander's voices for the uh, Azura Land and other collab commanders. I get I don't see how people listen to it for like hours and hours at a time. I have the one for the Nelson and oh my god, jeez. Well, actually, she's not that bad. It's the um those little uh DD ones I think that are the worst. Another one, Captain Clicker frantically spams literally any of the 100 possible coordinates on the map throughout the game. Yep, I've come across that player too. Got the kill still wait until the last shot and after you've worn down the target. Yep, that's very true on why I do think they need to add in a uh assisting kill ribbon into the game where assistant destruction whatever they, or whatever they want to call it i really like this one the ghost of a long time of a long past one who made the russian line plays decently well and knows how to use them effectively is a master with sad hacks in his dd and thinks kabarovsk is still the 45 knot monster that is was that that it was when when launched he enjoys most of the games he enters and loves the addition of any new soviet ship line he prays daily to the god of Russian bias to give him good games. Still gets bottom tiered. When wargaming wa once wargaming to add Soviet CVs to experience the ultimate bias, the sad man, however, gets stuck having to grind credits and thus progresses down the line at a painfully slow pace. Give this man the perfect match, and his JoJo Soviet stand will activate and murder the enemy team. May all who have a good heart give mercy to this poor soul who wishes to re regain. The body they use long wished for. Ouija, please, please give us Soviet CVs. Was the reply. No! German CVs don't exist now. If we had Soviet CVs, then game would be further contaminated. That's what I expected the response to be. Well, that one's really freaking funny. Alright, now we're on the uh, A Needs to Rework video. This one had a lot of interesting comments, so let's dig into it. Play more CVs to learn about them. Don't assume to know anything about balancing of players. Never even play the class. They. Wait. Don't assume to know anything about balancing of players. Never even play the class they wish to be nerfed. Okay. Seems where thing in World War II, of course, they are going to have a major role. Seems have strength and weaknesses. Same with other ships. Some have strong A, some not. They are balanced after that Musashi. Just playing a few classes and asking to nerf others doesn't give a full proper picture. If you're messing up so hard that you're alone and getting focused, any enemy ship will hit you hard, and CVs are good at that. So a lot of this, I actually agree with. Um, I have played CVs. I, don't, I think a lot of people just assume that I haven't. Now, I haven't, like, you know, played... Whoops. I haven't played thousands of games in CVs. I have a little over, I think, 200 or 300 games in CVs. Mostly in Graf Zeppelin, which is actually one of the worst uh, CVs in the game currently and what I'm talking about most of the time when I'm when I'm talking about CVs and the interaction with surface ships is in the context of either clan wars or ranked and these competitive modes where it's 7v7 and not a 12v12 game and the 12v12 game CVs I think are for the most part perfectly fine there are some CVs that need to be tweaked on an individual basis but Overall, they're okay, but when you take that sh same CV and put it into a 7v7 game mode, especially the way Wargaming has been doing it recently, just the fundamental way that the CV works means it's not balanced for a 7v7 game mode, because CVs are designed to be one ship in a game of 24. I'm sorry, actually, one or uh, two ships in a game of 24, one per side, so it's only really meant to be one per side in a game of... Uh, 24 players so when you take that and put that same ship with no changes in, into a game mode where there's only seven ships on a side and now you're actually forcing people to choose between a carrier or a battleship the way they've been doing it in clan wars to where now all you have is a bunch of cruisers and destroyers on the enemy team and there are carriers that are almost specifically designed to bully uh, cruisers and that's not going to be a good time for anybody. And plus, like with the most recent clan, uh, clan war season at tier six, tier six AA, 
there, there's no ships at tier six that have outstanding AA. They can stand up to the CVs. Um, we've been seeing in clan wars where the CV just attacks the same ship with the entire uh, fl flight and they get all the planes off even when they're grouped up with two or three other ships. So that that's an issue. That's that's my issue with CVs. Um, and I think a hot fix to it that would kind of negate their um, overpoweredness in these 77 competitive game modes would be to allow the team to take a carrier and a battleship. Because Wargaming has said just in every post they've made about CVs in these competitive game modes is that they want every single class to be able to participate in these game modes. But by forcing players to pick a CV or a BB, they are immediately eliminating the battleship class. And plus, like we saw in last season, the destroyers were almost non-existent in uh, tier 10 uh, clan wars uh, up at higher tier. That's another thing, too, where I think there's a bit of a disconnect with what I say versus what people think I'm trying to say. And I'm going to be super specific now. Last season for clan wars from like Storm 1 and up, the meta was 1 Hawk, 6 Venezia. From like Storm 2 down, you actually had a good mixture. It's just when teams got really competitive up at those higher tiers, it just became one meta, one strategy, and it was absolutely freaking terrible. So I hope that clears up some stuff. But some people are going to screen no matter what I say and no matter how I explain it. Say they improve, uh, have to say improve the priority sector, have four to six sectors to the right side. They have a warm up time of like seven seconds, which can be dropped to three seconds with commander skills that you can set. Uh, until you need to change and impl implement the selected sector into an overlay similar to the quick chat. Have like a 200-300% damage in that sector. This requires timing and skill to pull off and adds the potential for a strategy on both sides. You can strategic options down with that. But it's tough and a CV player needs to read and throw off a sector using speed boost or priority sector baiting. Um, this is something that I also kind of agree with. I wouldn't say 4-6 to six, uh, per side. But I would, for, I would certainly like to be able to focus my AA on the bow and stern sections of your ship. Because, especially right now, um, most of the dive bomb, actually all the dive bombers, uh, well, or bombers in general, you have to approach the ship from the bow or the stern in order to properly set up for a run. The way it is right now, you can only select port and starboard, so you can't even select the, sec the, the sector that you need in order to, you know, potentially negate some da some damage coming in for these uh, bombing runs. And bombers currently right now are some of the source of the highest alpha damage that CVs can output, especially with the German CVs and with ships like the Hakuru, who can do 20,000 damage plus if they get off a proper run. So having more priority sectors would certainly uh, help in this regard as well. I, I think I did mention that in this video as well. All right, now we're on the uh, clan. Oops, the clan battles miseries. The video I put out in the middle of the last season of Clan Wars, season nine, um, talking about the stalemate that was happening about higher tiers with the uh, strategies and such. How it got so bad that clans just get tired of it, so as a result clans in different leagues have to be paired with each other to create a match. That was very true. Um, we were in Typhoon, actually trying to get into Typhoon from Storm, and we were facing like Typhoon 1 teams. Now the way it's supposed to work in clan uh, wars, there's different leagues with different subdivisions in each league. So there's, for example, at the bottom, uh, Gale 3, Gale 2, Gale 1, then it goes to... Um, um, da, 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 what does it go to next? Why can't it? Oh, uh, Storm. Oh, I'm sorry. Squall 3, Squall 2, St Squall 1. Then Gale 3, Gale 2, Gear 1. And then uh, Storm 3, Storm 2, Storm 1. Then Typhoon 3, Typhoon 2, Typhoon 1, so forth and so on. So when you're in the struggle for the next league, let's say if you're in, like we were, we were in Storm 1 trying to get into Typhoon 3. We were being placed with Typhoon 1 teams. I think even one time we did get a Hurricane team trying to get uh, into Typhoon. So that is what was happening. And, and that's also what's happening now, it seems, in Tier 6 Clan Wars, where we are down in Storm now, and we're being faced, uh, paired up with Hurricane teams sometimes. So it's, it's incredibly frustrating. Oh yeah, this one. All right, so this guy right here. So he says, so basically knows you've uploaded this video. If you open up this, uh, 
whoops, want to open up a new tab, not a new window, whatever. Okay. So, um, Zoop put this out on May 26, 2020, and he was talking about Clan Wars killed by aircraft carriers. And I put this video out on uh, May 29th, 2020. So, that's his little nugget of evidence there. And he says, and three days later, you uploaded a video about the exact same topic, talking about exactly the same things. I've been observing you, your channel. It's been going on for quite some time now. Not only knows Zoop, but also Flamu. Flambass are basically being copied during one to three days after they upload a video on a certain topic. You upload a video about the same thing, with the same arguments, and the same content. Even the same chronological order, and I think you should, you can and should do better. Now, I already responded to this guy. Um... And I'm going to tell him, tell you guys what I basically told him. And that World of Warships isn't exactly a huge game. It's not like Call of Duty where there's so many things to talk about. There's so many modes. There's so much going on. I mean, Warzone, which is basically a standalone game from Modern Warfare, um, that has its own following almost completely separate from the game in, in and of itself. So when something happens in the game, most people are going to talk about it. I mean, it's just common sense. And the, the only time I've ever actually intentionally made a video in response to any of their videos, any other content creators' videos, was when I just made the Our Battleship's Dying video. Because No Zoop made a video about it, and I'm like, hey, I'm a Battleship main, I've been playing Battleships as my main class for three years now, so I'm going to share my thoughts on it. I even said it in the first 20 seconds of the video. And there's also several instances where I've made a video and a few days later another YouTuber made a video similar to it. Um, I think, let's see, um, there's one instance where I made a video talking about the Massachusetts Black. Let me pull it up real quick. Alright, so here. I have this video, I put this video up talking about the black ships, about the Massachusetts Black. November 26, 2018. This is one of this is an older video. And now if we go look Okay, look at this. December 4th, 2018. Jingles made a video Water Warships Back in Black and guess what it's about? Uh, da, 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 da. He has a segment in it talking about the Massachusetts Black. December 4th, 2018. November 26th, 2018. So, like, uh, I think not even a week. Actually, yeah, a little over a week later. Jingles made a video about the Massachusetts uh, being. He called it Back in Black. And I called it mine. Massachusetts Back in Black. A week before. Did he copy me? Probably not. He probably didn't even know my channel existed at this point in time. So... You guys get what I'm saying, like, there's only so much content in this game and content creators are going to talk about the same thing. Um, especially when they're participating in things like clan battles and ranked and they're experiencing the same issues and they're coming to the same conclusions. So, there's that. Alright, this will be the last one that we are going to talk about. Well, for the comment section at least, the FAQ section is coming up next. So, what happened to Mains? This is a video I put out this year in April. So, some context. Um, the Mains came out, Mainz, whatever you say it, came out and she was offered up in three discounted quote-unquote bung, uh, bundles. But then she was pulled for after, I think, like either five or six days from the store. And she was gone for almost a week. And then everyone was like, what happened to it? Because a lot of people, they don't want to buy those bundles because even though they're discounted bundles, quote unquote, they're still like 90, 80, and $70 bundles for a ship that you could just buy for 45 to $50, depending upon pricing. And Wargaming didn't really say anything about it, so I made this video where I did some digging to see what happened to it. So, quick rundown of this video, I just mentioned that it was, you know, released pulled and some people were saying oh they're pulling it because the bagration is coming out and it's kind of the same concept of mains mains is a heavy cruiser hull with light cruiser guns bagration is going to be a light cruiser with heavy cruiser guns and they were going to you know nerf the mains and then re-release it or something like that 
and that was the one conspiracy theory that I shared in the video. Then I show the um, digging that I had done, and if you had gone onto the forums, they Wargaming, um, I think it was actually Hapa, explained that they had pulled the mains from the store because there was so much going on in the game right now that they didn't want to overwhelm players with content. Now, to Hapa's credit and to Wargaming's credit, there was a lot going on in the game at that moment. You had the pan-European destroyer event going on. You had, I think there was some type of, I can't remember exactly what it was, but there was another event going on. And um, I think, uh, what line had just gotten released? I think it was the, the Italian cruisers had just been released, like, fully, too. So, yeah, there was a lot going on at this point in time in the game. So, okay. And they did explain, yeah, here it is. They did explain that it was always planned for the mains to be pulled. And if you did go check on the website, it said it was going to be on sale, S-A-L-E, you know, like sale, like something's discounted from this date to the, to the date that it was pulled. Okay. But it was never explained that it's going to be put back into the store for the normal price. Now, according to Hoppa, it was just a goof up and they, were, they weren't sure why they didn't put the sale dates on the website. And... So it was it was a goof and a miscommunication uh, from Wargaming, and the mains was eventually reintroduced back into the store about a week later. So all in all, it was a miscommunication from Wargaming caused a big ruckus, and the ship did return back onto the store within I think like a week and a half. Um, and the other thing was that in uh, Hoppa's response, he's the one of the community managers for, from Wargaming, by the way, if you don't know who, who he is, he said that it was going to come back soon. Now, soon from Wargaming could mean a week, a month, a year. That's just how it is when you're handling a business and such, and that's just how Wargaming has been. So it was like, okay, it's going to come back soon, but we don't know how soon. I think a couple of days after they made the video, they said that um, it was actually going to be released very soon, and it was within a couple of weeks. So that was the evidence I presented in the video. I just talked about the conspiracy theory just for, you know, for a little bit of fun, you know. So, um, and... When it was added back into the game, I went down here and I updated the uh, video with this post right here. I pinned it and I highlighted it. Um, that's what the love thing does. If you ever see me like love a comment that just highlights it so everybody will see it. And I do that to these pinned comments because the pinned comments, you're supposed to see them. But sometimes eh, YouTube doesn't work, so I, I love it just to make sure that people see it. So I updated the video. Hey guys, as of this Friday, 4-17-20, Mains is back in the premium shop. So apparently it was all planned, I guess. Just seems like a very strange marketing slash release plan to me. And again, just a big mis uh, miscommunication for more gaming. This is where it gets interesting. This guy right here. Wow. Just see what this guy, like, I don't know what happened to where he got this... I guess this is a triggering or whatever, but he says, so why the F you claim some other BS then in order to get those Russia hate clicks, which as you can see, there's nothing in the title that's like, oh, mains removed because of Russian bias or anything. And the thumbnail is just a picture of the mains with what happened to the mains. Um, are you selling these ships for working by claiming something they are not? This was normal. Ship bundle going away into normal premium shot, nothing strange even about it. I responded, if just the discount bundles were removed, that would not have been strange. The ship itself was removed within a few days of being released. That is not normal. Which is not. When a ship comes out, there's normally a bundle with it that, it, you know, you get the captain, uh, some boosters or something for a discounted price. That's normal. But normally those are out for a week or so. They, those go away, but you can always find the ship in the shop just by itself. Um, somebody said get rid of this guy and I, I, I was originally confused why I said get rid of this guy because there's only one comment at that time so um, turns out if we scroll down children this guy has been on almost every comment thread on 
this video, and I'm not even joking, the first, I think, half of the comment section, he's replied to people, and people have have all been telling him the same thing, like, hey, it was removed, but it's back now. It's it's not a normal thing for um, Wargaming. Um, and of course, some people are, you know, going with the conspiracy theory that, you know, Wargaming can allow good German premiums in the game, and he keeps replying, it was not removed. Uh, down here too, Mange is not even removed, you are fake news, pathetic as F, not even check for yourself, just blindly trust what the man in the video says, eh. And again, he's, yep, there he is right there, and you'll see Mange in the, premium sh in, in the premium store, so WTF liars. Um... Like I said, if a video, if a comment on this on this on this video has a reply, this man is has been here. Like, okay, this is this is the first. This is the one that doesn't have a, that doesn't have him on it. But there he is, right there. But yeah, you you guys get the idea. Like this man just went all out, even though I exp I explained that it's back in the store and. Oh boy, that 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 was a fun one. That was probably one of the most uh, interesting YouTube comment sections I've had. Even with all the um, the CV videos and stuff, just that one guy just going and uh, harassing the comment section. Anyway, that that's what that's what I said in the second part of this message. Um, Look, man, believe what you want to believe, but there's clear and obvious evidence that the ship was released, completely pulled from the shop, gone for a weekish, and then reintroduced. Which is very strange, but probably miscommunication from Wargaming about the release date of the mains. The migration conspiracy was just a, po was a popular point of conjecture on the forums and in Discord, so I included it for fun. Whatever you believe, harassing people in the comments won't help. So, yeah, that happened. If you want to check out all of his comments, just come check out the mains video and... They, they're still all down here. He hasn't removed them or anything. But, yeah. Uh, a very interesting commenter indeed. And I haven't heard from him since. Alright, now we're going to the FAQs portion of the video. So, right off the bat, one of the biggest questions I get asked is, am I a CC or am I planning on becoming a CC, a community contributor for Wargaming? And the answer to both is no. I was thinking about it for a very long time before when the channel was really starting to take off, right around the 10,000 subscriber mark. Because the bar, the um, bar to get into the CC program, it's a thousand um, subscribers or followers on whatever platform you're on, and you have to at least have I think it was like just a few like I think it was like 10 bits of content around uh, World of Warships and a couple other things like you know like be like 18 years or older speak. Uh, English, be able to communicate in English, be willing to use Discord, other things like that. So I fit the bill, obviously, for that program. But some things were changed a while ago to where CCs can't discuss upcoming ships and upcoming features as early as they used to be able to. And we're going to do this because, for example, with the EUDD event, the Russian cruiser line split was coming out right after that, and CCs got access to the Russian cruiser line early, including the um, Petropavlovsk, and the Petropavlovsk um, fiasco overshadowed the EUDDs. And Wargaming obviously wants the focus of the you know the current patch to be the main focus of the community. They want people involved in whatever's going on right now, not what may happen in the future. So using that logic, they kind of you know, cut down on that, where now CCs can really only talk about upcoming features and things. I think it's like two or three days before. That's why anytime you see a CC release a review for a premium ship, you know that that ship's coming out within a couple of days. Because that's what Wargaming wants. They want all their content to kind of be on the same timetable. And uh, despite what people believe, CCs don't get to keep test ships. They're, they get added to their account and then um, they're, they're removed after. If they want the ship, they have to pay for it. Um, at least to the, to the extent of my knowledge, that's how it works. Um, that's how it's worked. When I last looked into it, it may have changed, but as far as I know, that's it. They do occasionally get, you know, um, gifts from Wargaming to Blooms and um, this and that every now and then, but they don't get to keep all their test ships. Um, so I'm not really interested in the CC program. I've gotten this far without it. 
And like I've said before, this channel is completely self-sustaining. Uh, you guys watching, supporting the channel, that's how I'm able to get everything to review the premium ships, to get the balloons to convert XP, to get ships like from the Research Bureau and things like that. It's all sustained by you guys, and I can't thank you guys enough for that. All right, next FAQ. Um, what's your insert here, Commander build? Well, great thing about that is I've started to make guides for each individual um, tech line, battleships at least. So if you want to know what my German commander build is, you want to know what my American battleship commander build is, you want to know what my Japanese commander battleship build is, they're all going to be there. And um, all you got to do is search in Sea Lord um, American Battleship Guide, Sea Lord German Battleship Guide, Sea Lord Japanese Battleship Guide. Everything's going to be there. I explain why I take each each captain skill, why I take each module skill, and if there's a different module build or anything for a different part of the line, I explain it there as well. So if you have any questions about any of those things, go check out those videos. Or you could just ask me on stream or in the comment section. I will probably reply to you, but so many people ask me that question, I, I can't reply to everybody, unfortunately. That's one reason why I started to make the guide videos. Um, next question is, what do you teach? Um, I'm, a, I'm a teacher. Um, and that really is whatever the heck the school tells me to. I'm certified in, edu in uh, social studies, so normally it's world geography, world history, or psychology. Uh, this year, because of the corona, we still don't know fully just yet what uh, subject matter we are teaching, but it's probably going to be world geography or world history or psychology if I had to uh, take a guess right now. Next thing, what's your PC? Well, my PC currently right now, it is a, well, it's a custom built PC. I built it myself. I, I haven't bought an actual PC in years now. I have an i7-7900K. I have 32 gigabytes of GDDR4 RAM. I have a 2080 Ti uh, GPU, and that's what I run on. Um, that gets me max settings on, on Wood Warships at maximum FPS. Um, you may hear me joke about it on stream, how the frame rate drops every now and then because I'm streaming to two websites and stuff, and how my i7 is probably going to melt, which is probably true, rendering you know multiple videos a day and... 4K 60 FPS that poor i7. I mean, it's it's been pretty tough. It's my, been my processor for the past two years. It's not out this far, but I am planning on upgrading that processor to an i9 um, here in a bit and getting a new motherboard too. I have some cheap uh, MSB motherboard. Uh, it's, it's a micro ATX motherboard that desperately needs to be upgraded. So I'm probably going to do that when I get the i9, maybe later in this year probably around December when all that good stuff goes on sale so that's the PC I run on right now uh, runs other games on either high or max settings at 4k 60 FPS just fine except for Red Dead Redemption because I don't think there's a, there's a PC in in the world that's capable of running well no Linus Tech Tips has probably built a PC capable of running Red Dead Redemption at 4k 60 FPS um, somewhere in on his channel but it can run pretty much everything at max settings, 4K, 60 FPS, just fine. Other uh, question I get asked is, do you play any other games besides World of Warships? Um, I, I'm getting back into War Thunder right now. Uh, I gave up on War Thunder back when they removed the mouse, but I'm currently grinding my way up to the F4 Phantom because they added, added, they added in that thing. Those were my favorite planes in Ace Combat, another video game series that I play uh, besides World of Warships. But World of Warships has been my go-to game for the past three years. But that's kind of changing soon. More on that tomorrow. Um, but I, I do enjoy uh, part simulator games like Jurassic World Evolution, um, Planet Zoo. I used to play the crap out of Zoo Tycoon. And um, Planet Zoo came out, I think, about a year or so ago. I've been playing a lot of that. I also play Insurgency Sandstorm. And I also play uh, Star Wars Empire at War every now and then. Uh, n every now and then. Alright guys, uh, if you have any more FAQs, ask me in the comment section down below. I'll be happy to respond to them. This is just a little bit of a different video for today uh, that I just felt like doing and seeing how, how well it does. But anyway guys, again, if you have any more questions, ask me in the comments down below. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, hope you're having a wonderful Sunday. I hope to catch you guys in the next one.